Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Out the Podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I want to jump in on a recap and reaction to the Miami Hurricanes' win over Florida AM on Saturday. Obviously, we expected Miami to beat Florida AM, expected it to be a blowout. All of those things happened. Canes won 56 9, easy victory. Cam Ward is an absolute beast. Let me start there. 20 for 26, 304, three touchdowns. Absolute beast. But I'm going to stop right there. Because when you schedule games against the likes of Florida A&M or another Division I AA opponent, or even next week versus Ball, this Saturday against Ball State, when you schedule these types of opponents, you play. You should play them the way you would play an ACC team. If you played Georgia, if you played Bama, if you played Texas, Oklahoma, USC, uh, Ole Miss, Ohio State, you should play every game as if you're playing in the national championship. And I'm being obviously hyperbolic here. But you should play it as if you're playing a regular opponent. I understand. FAMU, Ball State, those are games. FAMU especially. Those are the types of games that you schedule because you're going to work on stuff. But you don't play the game in a way that sacrifices, one, the integrity of the game. And people will say, well, what what do you mean by the integrity of the game? You're not going to go for fourth down every time you have fourth down. <laughs> like, you're not. You're definitely not doing it against Florida State. I don't care how bad FSU might be this year. You're not going to go for fourth and five from their 15 in field goal range. You're not going to go for fourth and five. Miami did that twice against Florida a and in the first half. They went for fourth and four, fourth and five, inside the 20-yard line, in field goal range. The first time they did it, Cam Ward rolls out. He escapes pressure. Miami commits a holding on the offensive line, and Cam Ward completes a touchdown pass. The pass gets called back naturally. The touchdown gets called back from the holding, and they do eventually kick the field goal. But at the same time, you would never call that. You would never go for that unless it's the last two minutes of the game. You have to score a touchdown to to win, you you know, and, and the field goal doesn't tie it. You would never do that. And then they did it again. And the second time they did it in the first half, they got stuffed. They did not get the first down. So when I see stuff like that, and I watch Miami rather pass happy in the first half, I ask myself, well, what are we doing? Because if you, I watched, I was, I went to the game. Miami's second, they played their first drive was a two play, 28 yard touchdown drive. Second, the, the touchdown was a 17 yard pass. Their next possession, one, two, three, four, five, six passes, one run. The next possession, one, two, three, four, five passes, two runs. Next possession, one, two. This time they ran the ball. This time they ran the ball some. But at that point, they're up 25 to three. What I want to see when you're playing teams like this is I want to see you jump out real fast, but I want you to pound the ball. I want to see my offensive line go helmet to helmet and blow people off the line. I want to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball and show my team, look, we can run this damn football. Because against Florida, Miami didn't run the ball that much. They didn't run the ball that well, in my opinion. They were decent. They weren't great. This first half, it was heavy pass. It was just heavy passing. And they didn't really attempt to run the ball a lot. And so when I watch a game like that, I also saw sloppiness on defense that if you did that against a Division I opponent, would probably cost you a touchdown. They escaped one touchdown possibility at the one-yard line when they uh, committed a false start penalty at the one-yard line and eventually had to kick a field goal which made it 15-3. But overall, I wasn't impressed at all 
the first half with their play. They were up 25-3 at halftime. Probably should have been worse, in my opinion. Just defensively, they I mean, they gave up a 70-yard drive to, to FAMU. You know, that's just – and a 67-yard drive. Those are lengthy drives to an FCS school. Usually you might give up one field goal, maybe a touchdown. But you're not giving up two lengthy drives. Like these were 19 plays for 137 yards, those two drives in the first half. Now, at that point, I was just sitting here like, we look like shit. (laughs) I didn't think we looked good. But second half, it was different. Chains made a point to run the ball. They made a point. Let's run the ball. And they did. Cam Ward, I don't even know if he played into the fourth quarter because I'm at the game and I'm like, at that point, the game was boring. <laughs> game was over. Um, the la- their last touchdown drive was led by uh, Reese Poffenbarger, the backup quarterback. So Cam Ward's last drive was in the third. He, yeah, Cam Ward was out of the game at the end of the third at, with 343 to go in the third, which made it 46-9 when he scored on a eight-yard touchdown run. They ran the ball, and that's what I like to see. I want to see them run that football. They they scored touchdowns on their first three possessions, actually first four possessions of the second half, which which was great to see. Um, I know the people and you know the gamblers were not very happy because the spread was forty seven and a half, and they won by forty seven. <laughs> you know, I was actually sitting when I was where I was at the game. I talked to this guy sitting in front of me. He's like. I got money on the spread. He's like, what's the spread? And he said it was 47 and a half. I'm like, oh, my God. Man lost his money on a half a point. Um, But I wasn't impressed with that first half. Second half, far more impressed. I like the approach they took, you know, and uh, that, that one was way better. Defensively, yeah. Defensively, they have a player who's an absolute stud. He's a transfer, but my God, Tyler Barron, three sacks, three and a half tackles for loss. He is an absolute monster. They got a gold. I mean, that's the diamond they grabbed in the transfer portal. He is an absolute beast. Absolute beast. It's very, I'm very impressed by him. Very impressed by him. Um, Wesley Bissaint had an awesome interception on the first possession. Great, great play. You know, that that was a hell of a play he made there. Let's see what else we got. But overall, yeah, second half, much better than the first half. Now I'm curious to see what's going to happen next week. Well, this weekend versus Ball State. Ball State is coming in at it's a 330 game. Ball State's 1-0. Who did they beat? They beat, is that Missouri State? Missouri State Bears, they won by eight. Four, it was a 28 20 fourth quarter. Wow. It was a 14 14 game going into the fourth quarter. Obviously, I expect Miami to blow these guys out. But I, I have a historical, you know, there's Miami's a 36 and a half point favorite. I expect Miami to blow them out. But this is going to be a big situation because a week later, Miami's going into conference play. And it's very no, – I'm sorry, they're not. They're going – a week later, they're going to South Florida. So they're going to go to Tampa and play the Bulls, and that's a state in-state rival type of game, even though they're not really rivals. But it's an in-state game. A lot, of, a lot of players will know each other. South Florida was in a barn burner with Alabama until the final five minutes. That game was 21-16 at Alabama with about five minutes to go in the game. It ended up being 42-16. to But South Florida gave Alabama problems. I think it's really important that Miami goes into that game very, very focused because after that game, you got home versus Virginia Tech. That is a looks like a Thursday night game or it's a Friday night game. You got Cal, Road at Cal. The the toughest game on their schedule is at Louisville um, on October 19th. But it's all conference opponents from there on out. I mean, from after next weekend – against South Florida, it's all conference points from then on out. So I want to see these guys run the ball, pound the ball, be crisp, be clean, and not make silly mistakes. 
And right now, hey, you're 2-0. Happy about that. Cam Ward looks amazing. But it's time to keep, but we need to keep doing that. The Canes have to keep on doing that. Xavier Restrepo has been fantastic. He is as reliable a receiver as it gets. Tremendously reliable receiver. Four catches, 104 yards. Isaiah Horn went for four for 66. Um, Sam Brown, four for 35. I know, he, I think he had a drop. Uh, but overall, decent win. Nothing special. Dominant performance, but nothing special. And I want to see... I want to see them beat Ball State worse than this. I want to see Ball State with a zero at the end of that game. And I want to see Miami with a 6-0 six zero, six zero at the end of that game, at least 60, because they can score the points. I think we've seen that they can score points. It's a matter of how they do it. So we shall see what happens next week. I'd like to see a lot more. I'd like to see – I mean, they're very balanced. I mean, they're going to be 38 rushes to 33 passes, but that first half was not balanced at all. So I want to see balance from the beginning, not just when you have a 25-6 lead, okay? But what are, did you see? The, but if you saw the game, let me know what your thoughts are. Hurricanes fans, love to hear your opinions on the game, what you thought of that game, because I'm, I'm, I'm realistic and I'm constructively critical of, of Miami. I'm, I've been hurt too many times for too many years. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Leave a, leave a thought, leave a comment, like this video, share it. Come on now.